Okay. Hello, my name is Christy and I am a witch. Today we're going to talk about Mabin or Mabon and how to celebrate it. Mabin is celebrated on or around the uh, autumnal equinox, which changes every year. This year it's going to be on the 22nd of September in the Northern Hemisphere. As with all of the holidays, if you cannot celebrate it on that day, you can celebrate it around that time, either the weekend before, the weekend after, whenever you have the availability to do so. It's also kind of a seasonal event. Mabin is the second of three harvest festivals. The first one being Lunasa, which takes place in late August, which celebrates wheats and grains being harvested, often with breads, beers, that sort of thing. Mabin, which is late September, celebrates the harvest of gourds, apples, pumpkins. Samhain, which is of course October 31st, Halloween, celebrates the final harvest, so anything that is remaining before it goes to seed, prepping your garden for the winter months, and then harvesting any root vegetables, remaining apples, grapes, berries, nuts. Mabin is known or celebrated as a witch's Thanksgiving. Um, because it's such a bountiful harvest, there are all of these gourds and apples. It is celebrated with a feast. Because we're kind of anticipating the upcoming winter months around this time and for all of the uh, plant life to die off, it's actually a really good time to set intentions for things that you want to have less of or decrease. Unhealthy habits, relationships, things that you just kind of want to let go of. Maybe I'll finally um, put the intention out to stop biting my nails. Whatever it is that you want um, less of now is actually a good time to put that intention out there. Let's talk about a couple of ways you can celebrate Mabin. My personal favorite way is to decorate with autumnal decor. Fall leaves, seasonal flowers, gourds, pumpkins, pine cones, acorns, whatever you have access to. They can be real, they can be fake. Um, but Putting them out there, especially if you have an altar set up, putting some around your altar or just around your house if you don't, um, just to bring in that autumnal energy is a great way to start celebrating Mabin and this harvest. Of course, harvest your garden. If you have anything that is able to be harvested, now's a great time. Also, if you have things that are kind of evergreen, that survive all year round, or if you have an indoor like herb garden, you can still harvest some of those, like get some sprigs of rosemary to be dried out to either use for food or use for spell work. That sort of thing is a great way to celebrate this harvest. So if you don't have a literal garden to harvest, now is a good time to harvest a bunch of uh, supplies for yourself for the upcoming winter months. So stock up on ingredients for spells, herbs, um, candles, any supplies that you might need for your magical workings. I will link below in the description somewhere. Um, on my blog, I have a whole list of free and cheap resources for spell supplies. So you can find some resources and some inspiration on how to free or cheaply uh, stock up your witchy supply cabinet. Apple season magic. Apples, apple wood, apple blossoms have such a deep rooted history in magical workings. From love to healing to manifesting abundance, connection to the underworld or the spirit realm. Apples have so many different uses. So here are just a couple of ways that you can use apples for Mabin. If you live in an area with like you pick apple farms or if you're lucky enough to have access to an apple tree, you can uh, pick your own apples. It's a great way to literally harvest uh, on the harvest festival. Apples have been used in a whole mess of love magic spells. I have always been interested in that old-fashioned love divination where you peel an apple in as long of a piece as you can all the way around in like a spiral and then you drop it on the ground or sometimes in a body of water and then it is said that um, as it falls in onto the ground or into the water that it will make the shape of the initial of your true love. I think that's so fun. I love that. If you cut an apple in half where the core is, inside of it is a star. It's a pentacle. Another great way to use apples for your Mabin celebration is to dry them in an oven and use them as decoration. So cut them 
uh, horizontally to the core and then dry them in an oven. And you can use those to decorate your altar or your Mabin table if you're having a feast. You can also use apples and maybe some cinnamon and some other uh, spices, maybe anise, um, to make a uh, simmer pot to welcome in your Mabin feast guests. Whether it's just you, your friends, your family members, your coven, whoever you're having over, you can make a nice welcoming Mabin simmer pot. When you cut into your apples, whether you're just eating them or uh, baking with them or if you're going to dry them, uh, one thing that you can do is collect the seeds. You can either try planting them, have your own apple tree if you have the space for that, or you can uh, put them out to dry out a little bit and then collect them because you can put those seeds uh, in spell jars or uh, charm bags. There's a whole bunch of different uses for apple seeds. So collect them, put them in a little jar or in a little bag and save them for later. Of course, there is always cooking and baking. You can cook with apples, pumpkins, gourds. Every year I make this like butternut squash soup you can make pies, breads, anything with seasonally harvested fruits and vegetables. You can host a feast or a potluck. This year I'm going to be celebrating Mabin with my family who are not witches, but they are there for the food, which is fine with me. A potluck is also a great way to celebrate because it's a little bit less pressure on you to make a whole meal, but also it is a celebration of sharing and abundance and being thankful because it's the witches' Thanksgiving, being thankful for one another and showing your thanks with your uh, harvest, whether you got it from the grocery store or not. And finally, as the veil thins and we get closer to Samhain, our divinations might get more accurate as we become more in tune to uh, our spiritual side, the other realm, uh, whatever we want to utilize to communicate to divine with. So uh, hop back if you have it into your favorite divination practice. Maybe try some new spreads, try to strengthen your divination skills so that when someone comes around, you are ready for it. So those are just a few really simple, easy ways that you can celebrate Mabin. Let me know how you plan on celebrating in the comments. I would love to hear it. I would love to hear if you have any traditions or ideas. If you have any recipes, send them my way. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, blessed Mabin, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Not a lot of dog content. Ugh.